This is a Land Rover Discovery 3 and today I'm going to take a walk around it, a look inside it and then go for a quick drive. So let's get going, shall we? So we'll start here at the front of the Land Rover Discovery 3 where you can see it's got the Rooney grille. Now this isn't a common thing on Discovery 3s, it's actually far more common on Discovery 4s and we're not sure if this is an original piece or an aftermarket edition. But if it is an aftermarket edition, I'm judging you, whoever did this. Also, Land Rover prides themselves on what they call their command driving position. Although to achieve it in this vehicle, what they've done is created this massive black strip to hide the fact that the interior of the car is sort of higher than the outside styling would suggest. So this is all dashboard, like the width of my hand is the height of the dashboard inside. And it, none of this is windscreen, but it's all in, it, it is the windscreen, if that makes sense. Interesting choice. And while we're here at the front, I just wanted to quickly mention the engine. It's the Lion V6. So top marks Land Rover for thinking of a cool name for your engine. Um, it's 2.7 litres and it's bone, bone. And it's also become prone to random crank failure. So there's not really anything to do about that. And when it happens, it requires a new engine. It's just one of those things that you get with luxury vehicles as they get older. So driving this car is a bit like playing Russian roulette with your wallet. Um, Let's see if the rest of the car can make up for it though. Okay, now we'll move down the side where the first thing to point out is this car is on snow tyres, which seems appropriate for the current climate. It's very slab sided, but the windows aren't completely upright, so you don't get the problems that you get on a G-Wagon, for example, where the windows reflect each other and you can see everything like a hall of mirrors. And then, um, it's quite, it's quite big. I'm not sure if you've noticed, but it's quite a big car. Like this is me stood right next to it. It's tall, it's taller than I am. Um, and obviously a lot wider. And then finally we come to the back or the tailgate because this is a proper split folding tailgate as I will now demonstrate. Wow. And then you can sit here and, um, and knock the snow off your boots before you get in, like that. And also there's one more slightly stupid thing you can do with this that was once shown to me by a Land Rover dealership. Um, and I'm not sure, I think it's a hunting thing, but you can then close the top and, and use this as a platform to stand on in order to survey your surroundings. So if you need to address an angry mob or I don't know, look for grouse, then uh, this is the car for you. Good stuff. Now, let's move on to the interior. So welcome to the boot of the Land Rover Discovery 3. And as you can see, it truly is capacious. You can fit one very large adult in here with no bother at all. And there's probably space for another one as well. Now, if you come in close, I'll show you some of the interesting features in this boot, of which there are many, because this is a three row SUV. Um, so Land Rover really went for it. They put in these little glove box things, um, which are for children to play with and break, I guess. I always remember that I wasn't allowed to leave them open when I sat at the back of one of these. You also get extremely large cup holders. They are large enough for bottles of wine. Um, so soccer mums. And then you get this tiny little tray here, which is uh, useless. It's very shallow. It's as shallow as my fingers and much smaller than any mobile phone to ever existed after this car had come out. And finally, because this is a very premium spec model, you have these little radio controls. So you can plug in a set of headphones and uh, change the volume and stuff. I don't know why, why anyone thought this was a good idea. You can't trust children. That's Harry's, Harry King's rules of life. Don't trust children. Now, of course, the final thing to show in this boot is the seats. So I'm going to climb out now and then demonstrate the middle row folding down and then getting into the back seats. So let's get to that. So come on. Now, a famous um, TV presenting motoring journalist 
once said that um, you couldn't do these seats with one hand and it obviously wasn't designed by somebody who had children. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to hold this in one hand, which is uh, four countries and the Welsh canals or counties, no country, four counties and the Welsh canals. I'm going to hold this in one hand at all times so I can only use my right hand to do the chairs. So if you want to go around to the other side. So here we are, canal book in hand. Watch this. And now you need to fold the rear seats up. So you reach in and there. Oh Christ. <laughs> that goes up. Pull that forward. That goes there and there you go. One hand only, and now you can put a child in there. Or uh, what's gonna happen now is I'm gonna get in there. So watch this. So you have these big grab handles here on the back of these chairs for this purpose. And then there's really, really big space so you can just step through because the entire chair has gone forwards. And then you probably can't see, so I'll fold that forwards, but I'll fold this back. So you just have to be careful that you don't put the the chair back down on your foot because it can happen but you know you're an adult um, and then lift that back up and as you can see I have enough room and you just pop this up as well there you go it's perfectly adequate seating for an adult um, I have actually been all the way to the top of Scotland in the third row of a Land Rover Discovery and I was fine I mean, it wasn't comfortable, comfortable, but it was bearable. So for adults, for long journeys, third row, absolutely fine. All the other chairs, really good. So here we are in the back of Discovery and it's perfectly lovely. So sitting in the seat properly, I only just have enough knee room, but you can put your feet all the way under the seats in front. There are acres of headroom. Um, I could probably wear a stovetop hat, stovetop, stovepipe, whatever it's called. I could wear a hat in here. So let's talk about the amenities. So you have this boy here, which looks like a weird crying face with a little nose and a mustache. Um, but that's two air vents with the controller there. And then you have this little compartment where you have an aux in for your stereo system and a 12 volt socket so you can plug your USBs in. And then underneath you have what is currently being used as a tiny little trash bin, which is, I mean, it, there's no good use for that space. It's really small. You have uh, leather seat back pockets, ooh, luxury. And then if you look down there, the world's largest door cup holder, which would be big enough for a two litre bottle, but it's so short that it would definitely fall over as soon as you went around a corner. Speaking of falling over, going around corners, as you can see, this is a very much a bench seat. So um, if you do happen to go around a corner quickly, it's quite uh, difficult to stay upright but it's a Land Rover Discovery, so you don't ever go around a corner quickly. It's sort of a problem that solves itself. You also have big grab handles here for if you're going off-road, and a grab handle here, and also both of these are helpful if you're climbing into the third row. So let's move on to the front. So finally, here we are in the front of the Discovery, and I'm going to talk you through the cabin. So we'll start with the steering wheel. It's massive, because this is a Land Rover, and if it didn't have a truck wheel in it, I mean, what's the point? You've got your normal stalks behind it and then your cruise control. Maybe it's a traction control, but it's not, it's cruise. Your Tom cruise control is on the steering wheel. To the right, you have the normal rotary dial for the headlights. And then in the center, you come to the horrific mess of plastic buttons. Now this is a Land Rover. So this has one of my favorite design um, approaches ever. We want to make everything big enough that you can easily use it while wearing some gloves. So I'm gonna put on a glove now, like OJ couldn't um, and we'll just see oh turn that off yes this all works well done Land Rover I can use it wearing a glove however there's way too many buttons and if you have to do anything with this while you're driving it's a massive distraction it does have a touch screen with a nav in it but obviously at this point it's incredibly dated so I would rather use my phone moving down we have the gear knob which is reassuringly chunky and then finally you have what this car is really notable for and that's terrain response so you have your five different driving modes uh, normal snow and ice mud and ruts sand and rock crawl 
and then you have your ride height and your high and low gearbox and then this yellow button in the middle is descent control which means you can drive down a hill with, well it's like cruise control for off-roading so it just means you absolutely crawl along you never have to touch the brake because if you're going down a very steep hill the last thing you want to do is touch the brake you make the wheels lock up and then you can roll so it controls all of that so that's technology dealt with now let's move to the cubby spaces of which there are many because this is a large suv um, we'll start in the middle with this absolute weapon of a bin um that's how deep it is i, I can like stick my arm all the way in uh and you can i mean you could keep a picnic lunch in there i believe it was an option to get it cooled also this folds all the way back so you can use it as a sort of table in the back if you need to then you have all the little bits on the center console so there's this little coin slot which isn't really useful um two big cup holders where the center lifts out to make them even bigger if you need if you need a bigger oh, if you need a bigger cup holder than that um which you shouldn't really I'm, I'm judging you and then finally a little place here where you could put your telephone but it's not really big enough anymore for modern telephones and two 12 volt sockets which as you can see the owner has put a usb in that one to make it usable for modern day and now we'll move to the glove boxes that's right there are two there's the top one where you can fit the owner's manual and the locking wheel nut and then the bottom one where you can hide all of your snacks over here there's another cup holder that comes out of the dashboard um if you're american you probably think that's too flimsy but everyone else thinks it's fine and then finally again in the doors there are the world's largest door bottle holders which are again shallow but wide so not that great if you're going to go around a corner but i guess that solves it if you're european you can use the sensible one on the dash and if you're american you can put your big slurp down there and drive down the freeway never ever taking a turn ever again okay there are also vanity mirrors in these massive 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 window blinds because the windscreen is huge and then here is where you get all of the warnings for um it being an off-roader so this this is the one that tells you this car will fall over if you turn a corner too fast and remember your seat belts and then this gives you the dimensions of the car which is quite useful because um it, it's pretty much running up against what is the limit for most vehicles in a multi-story car park this vehicle is six foot and six inches tall or two meters if you're in metric um you can of course lower the ride height to get into a multi-story but it's it feels quite tight if you ever use one so i would recommend surface parking i think that's everything then let's go for a drive so driving the land rover discovery 3 i'm going to do my best to keep my rose tinted spectacles off for this piece but this is the car that my parents had when i was a child so obviously i've got some fairly positive nostalgic memories um, with these cars but we'll start with some cold hard figures because you can state them without bias so it has 190 brake horsepower and a whopping 440 pound feet of torque from its 2.7 litre turbo diesel v6 um, which is not a lot of power but plenty of torque it's great for towing if you're a person of a of a horse riding nature or god forbid a caravanist um, not a huge amount of horsepower though and uh, because of that it's not that fast it takes 11 seconds for it to get to 60 which for the time it came out was respectable but now is well it, it feels kind of sluggish in traffic you'll get up to speed no bother there's lots of power there but it's just not quick and uh the auto box again is showing its age slightly so um it's not terrible it's not massively slow but it's slightly more labored over changes that than a modern one would be and it does only have six speeds so you're not quite always in the power band as, as well as you would be in a, a more modern box with uh, with more speeds and then the other thing to mention is the terrain response system which was pretty revolutionary when it came out in this car um it you know we hadn't really seen these systems before i think it only came in the full-size range rover before this um and obviously the previous discovery was a proper like farmer's vehicle it was it had a big lever for low range and a big lever for your diff locks and you know a hose out interior basically you know a little bit more luxury than that but it was pretty basic and then suddenly there was this and it was their you know mid-range family car and you could 
you you could just drive it anywhere. I have been off road in these cars, and you just engage those buttons, and anyone, a child, could drive. You have to have zero off road experience, and you just put it in the right mode and li lift the suspension up, and it'll just go. And the knowledge that that system is in the car makes you feel so powerful on the road. Even though the car's slow, it kind of feels unstoppable because you have that secure knowledge that um, if there's a mudslide around the next corner, not that there will be because we're in England, but you just think, well, I can go over it and it will be fine. And that's, I think that's what attracted so many people to this car when it came out. And you add that and it's got this amazing Land Rover command seating position where you're high up and you have this commanding view of the road. The seat's super comfortable. You've got the lowerable armrest on the left-hand side. So you're in this kind of supreme off-roading armchair. Um, massive steering wheel in front of you. It's like a truck. Again, it just adds to that feeling of sturdiness. You've got that massive row of buttons to your left. And they're all massive so you can push them with your gloves on. All of it just adds together to have this incredible feeling of capability. Um, which it then can back up with that terrain response system and really properly go anywhere. Um, speaking of driving comfort, um, the visibility is amazing. Really, really big glass house and you're so high up in it, you can see down and around the car and the car is square, so you kind of know where the extremities are. Even on this car, I believe all models came standard with um, parking sensors all the way back to the first year of production. So that's very useful because, yes, you can see very well, but the car is still big and um, it's helpful to have that. Especially um, one downside is because of the length of the vehicle and the height of it, if you start to reverse towards like a lower car, like a, an MX-5 or something like that, as you get closer to it, it starts to disappear from view um, in parking manoeuvres. In actual traffic, no one should ever be quite that close to your bumper, so it's not really a, a massive problem. It's only when you're parking and that's when the parking sensors are useful. They are slightly over-eager, but you get used to it. Uh, the comfort is astounding. The seat's super soft. Um, the pedal positions are good. You're basically sitting upright in a chair, so it's like the pedals are... It, it, like you're at a dining table, almost, so the pedals are kind of just below your feet rather than out in front of you, um, which kind of sounds strange, but once you're in the car, makes sense. And it means that when your feet are off the pedals... Uh, it's just as comfortable as when they're on them and it, it adds to that relaxing feeling and uh, as well as being a very capable car this car is an astute motorway cruiser downside to driving the car well the fuel consumption is not brilliant um, even though it's a diesel you're not getting much above 20 miles to the gallon um, especially if you drive anywhere with any gusto it's you know not economical if I own this car I would be quite worried about that engine it's probably the thing that would keep me from buying one because the cost of replacing the Lion V6 if it goes wrong, catastrophically like it can, is the same as just buying another Discovery 3. So you're looking at a complete loss and obviously it's not covered by anything, that's just on you. And these cars still command, you know, three or four grand. Um, that's a lot of money to just throw away if something goes wrong randomly. So I would be worried about that. The steering and braking, while it's fine, it's not dangerous, the steering feel, lock to lock, it kind of changes as you get right the way to lock, it almost sticks there. And then you have to kind of tug it back out and then it draws back to centre. So when you're doing tight manoeuvres, that's slightly odd. And the brakes are progressive, but not that powerful. Especially, you know, compared to fully up-to-date modern cars, it feels a little bit slow on the brakes. Um... Not dangerous, but just not quite as reassuring as having a, a completely modern, up-to-date braking system. Uh, that The traction control, though, is amazing. I, I drove this car on snow, as you can probably see in the pictures now, um, and I could not disturb it at all. Um, it really is it, it's astounding for its age. You, it just is completely unflappable, because it was, it was patches of snow followed by slick tarmac and it was just going on and off them no bother no wheel spin no shifting side to side and you could just kind of feel it working and managing everything and that was properly impressive but um if it hadn't had that and it had the steering and brakes that it does i'd have been um i'd have felt quite uncomfortable so it's really the traction control that saves it there with everything considered though it definitely is it's better than it is bad 
you know, there's more plus points than the negative points. Um, it's just, it's not up to snuff with completely modern SUVs, but I think it's more capable and better than just about anything else you can find in this price bracket. It's certainly going to beat out the Land Cruiser all day long in terms of um, what you're getting for your money because Land Cruisers just don't get this cheap and there's not enough of them sold in this country where, you know, you can find a Land Rover Discovery 3 anywhere and it will go just as far off-road as the Cruiser will. Um, you just have to hope it break doesn't break down and you can get back out again. So yeah, throw it back to me for the uh, conclusion. So, the Land Rover Discovery 3. Is it a good car? Well, yeah, it's a brilliant car. Um, don't buy one if you care more about reliability than anything else. But if you want roguish good looks, brilliant off-road capability, really, really comfortable seating and driving position, and just a commanding feeling of the road, then this is the car for you, because I think it's the car for me. There might be one of these in my future. We'll see. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please remember to like, subscribe, comment down below if you have anything to say about what I've said in the video. And you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Patreon, and Drive Tribe. And remember, we now have merch that you can buy at our spread shop. The link's down below. Okay, guys. Cheerio. Mm.